Hello and welcome. <clears throat> We're here for another amulet stream today. The reason I'm doing back-to-back -back amulet is that basically I've been... Well, first of all, I love it. Second of all, <laughs> it's because I've been thinking a lot about these, uh, these past weekend's results, right? Like um, Channel Fireball, for those of you that are unaware, uh, they posted all the top 64 uh, deck list from this past weekend's GP in Columbus, which was won by Orsa, Simic Orsa, by the way. And I went through all of the, de of the deck list, and what I saw was an absurd amount of uh, Simic Orsa. Uh, I'm talking about something ridiculous, like 30% or, or something like that. I, I didn't do the actual math, like I didn't actually count deck for deck, but I remember seeing like Orsa over and over again. Uh, I remember seeing uh, a ton of uh, shadow decks, and actually a very uh, a small but... Uh, considerable resurgence of humans which surprised me a, f a fair amount because I am not particularly sure that it has a great Ursa matchup but um, they were just a lot of human decks in the top 64 which I was surprised um, both of the amulet decks there were two amulet decks in the top 64 and both of them were playing Karn um, one of them had no scouts and uh, just explores and stuff. I don't think I particularly agree with it. Scout is particularly good in the Ursa matchup, honestly. Um, so if you're, I, I think that not playing Scout is, is actually kind of a mistake. It, a sloth is, of course, much uh, much better in the Shadow matchup, as you, of course, might know because it's pretty obvious. Uh, but still, like the fact that people were playing Karn to success actually makes a lot of sense. Because this card, I mean, this is the card that Team Lotus Box chose and found as kind of like the Ursa Mirror Breaker. So it may, I mean, it's clearly good against Ursa, right? <laughs> they figured that out. Um, so it's clearly great against Ursa. And barring Death Shadow and humans, it is actually also great against the rest of the decks that were in the in the top in the top tables, uh, be it uh, Mono Green Tron, which there were a fair amount of, uh, Eldrassi Tron, all those kind of decks. Um, basically, Karn might be just in a really good spot right now. So that's why I've been like brainstorming, and I've been uh, looking to find a list that you know goes back to Karn and actually takes advantage of him uh, in, in the best way possible. Uh, another thing, like if you think about all the decks I just named, uh, you're going to see that all the decks, literally every single one that I just named, has something in common, and that is that Path to Exile is very good against them. So I thought that I wanted to make sure I have a way to basically support Path to Exile, so what I did is I went back to our good old trusty mana base and I basically uh, tried to maximize on white sources. So as you can see, we have 11 white sources counting crossroads and I'm using a one of Razor Bear's Thicket that I'm playing over one of the snow-covered forests. And uh, the, reason, uh, the reason I'm choosing Thicket over something like Horizon Canopy or stuff like that uh, is because we don't have Kali Garden, so like the early game, it's a little bit, you know, we basically the damage is, is probably going to be more relevant in this version of the deck than in others. So I wanted to make sure that I have a painless a green and white source, and Razor Verge Thicket is definitely the best option that we have in modern. Uh, but yeah, so we are going back to Crossroads over Radiant Fountain. This This one is the one that I'm really not excited about. Uh, I've been very happy with having a fountain as an untapped uh, source that we can, you know, help. It can help cast Karn on turn three. But still, I mean, you know, like if if I want to play Path to Exile, I need to make that change. It's just it's too important for our cyborg the games. Whenever Path to Exile is, uh, whenever Path to Exile matters, uh, we're going back to the full four sanctuaries. This is not a big deal. And then uh, the full four gemstones, obviously, as well as the border scarism. So uh, those are the changes uh, to the list that we're going to be playing today. And yeah, so I'm doing four steerings, three once upon a time. Uh, this could be the other way around, uh, but instant speed is not particularly important in this 
in this version of the deck, the only things that we're doing at instant speed that cost mana are going to be cracking engineer explosives and casting Path to Exile slash Disdainful Stroke. So maybe I should be having uh, uh, three ones, uh, four ones upon uh, four steerings. I'm going with this split. We can try the other the other split for the second league, uh, but yeah, th this is what we're going to be doing for the first one. And then as far as the side will go, it's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's nothing too crazy. I definitely want to. I'm prioritizing the second Cavern of Souls over the second Field of the Dead. I think this card is just way too important in the Ursa matchup and against Grixis Shadow to to not play. So. So we are playing it. Uh, okay. Wow, interesting. Modern format playoffs. Is this Saturday? Huh. I think I'm actually playing this event. If I do play in this event, I'm gonna stream it. Uh, yes. Yeah, stay tuned about that. I di honestly did not know. I should. I should try to be a little bit more <laughs> mindful of the events going on in Magic Online. <laughs> But yeah, I might if I I would I might need to figure some stuff out. But if I do, then I can definitely stream that event. Let, let's see what what time is it. Uh, I'll check that out later. We're fine. We're fine. That 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 could be a cool a cool uh, thing to stream. Yeah, this hand is unfortunately unkeepable. I have to ship it. Another unkeepable hand. Oh, this is a fine hand. We're gonna bottom on the Asusa. And I think we bought on the Amulet as suck word as this is. Like we were keeping we're I'm I'm trying like the, the way that this 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 hand works out is if I is if I manage to to play a card on turn three and it's good enough. That is like that's the only way that I can get away with this game. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could sign up now. I mean, considering that I have like infinite or oh, we're playing against Storm. Oh, that's right. This is a Storm player. Well. So if we find a bounce land, we still don't really do anything. Because we have nothing, I guess. No, we can't. We're going to be two mana short of cracking that explosives. Malcoman, thank you so much for that tier one subscription. Welcome to the Prime Time Stronghold. Really appreciate the support. I mean, if we don't get killed, we can lock them out next turn for what's worth. Or that. <laughs> yep, we're that. Mm -hmm. All right. My opponent is actually a very good storm player, so I'm, I'm just not gonna assume that they're gonna miss that somehow. All right. What do we want? We want cavern. We don't want this guy. We want these. Want. These and Sage, but not Force it bigger. Path is actually very bad against Storm. I don't even bring it in. Field of the Dead out. Um, Ghost Quarter out.
Actually, yeah, cr Crossroads sounds worse than Ghost Quarter here, actually. Uh, yep. This is what we're doing. It's not great, but it is what it is. Hmm. Having Nambus Fury on the side would be a great meme. It, it, it kind of would be, yeah. There you go, that Malcolm in. Um, can we win with this? Say we find a bounce here. We need to top deck exactly Asusa. Sounds pretty sketchy. Yeah, I'm going to ship it. Okay, this is better. Keep bottom summon respect. All right, we might find the scout. Oof. Uh, yeah, I think we have to take the scout here. It represents an interaction. We may need to find another bounce land or an amulet. Nice. All right. Nice. This is how we do it. Um. So what am I doing <clears throat> here? Uh, what am I doing here? I'm gonna get I think I just get back to negation here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get back to negation because I'm I'm gonna need to use the the scout activation here. Which means that I don't have access to Bojuga Bog. So we're going to we're going to hold up Act of Negation this turn. If I had been able to hold up the, the Sakura Tribe Scout there, then I would have I would have certainly gone for, for the hasting. And we would have had instant speed bog as interaction. We might still be dead here though. We might certainly still be dead. Still be dead. If they have like remand and another Another country, if I think I die. So they remand their own gifts. They can trip. And if they have, if they draw into another guy, if they draw into another ritual, then they can just uh, cast the gifts again and kill me. Which is pretty impressive. But like I, I kind of drew great, but just wasn't enough. Of course, we're not gonna have to pay for the pack because it fizzled, which is nice. Oh, cool! We didn't die. Awesome. All right. 
So we do this. Yeah, we're going to transmit for explosives here. What about countering flashback field? That means that if my opponent, a flashback piece, um, that means that if my opponent has another piff or another other another thing, they just get to go off. So I'd rather not risk it. I am always in the camp of playing it safe against Storm. They have way too many, way too many ways of getting you. Storm is a powerful deck. So we're going to transmute. Then we can play explosives for two. If they have a remand for the explosives, they get us. That's okay though. Transmute. And you need explosives. Cast it. Blow it up. What do you think about the Jewish stepping for Claimer Amulet? Uh, it seems a little bit too cute. So Jewish step like. So Jiru Step has the same problem that Tethering Peaks has in in the uh, Breach versions of the deck, which is like the cost of having that card into your deck is huge. Because <laughs> it is horrendous for you to draw that card. Like it, it can literally give, be game losing for you to top deck that card over like a real land, right? So I don't think that, first of all, like I don't think that we can afford it. And second of all, I think that it's particularly bad because if you naturally draw it, then you're kind of dead. And it's not like Knight of, Knight of the Royal Aquarius or Crop Rotation, which are like one mana and that's it, right? Holding up, uh, Reclaimer Activation is actually a real cost, which is like two, which is not free. So that means that whenever you have your, your prime time turn, you would need to... Like usually when prime time comes down, you're not activating... You're not activating uh, Reclaimer as much because you're using all your mana every turn because of the Titan. So that makes uh, that makes the affair even worse. Hey, Seminar, how you doing? <clears throat> Why is my opponent thinking so much about this? Maybe their hand is like ritual metamorphose gifts. And I guess if their hand is ritual metamorphose gift, then it's actually worth thinking about here, about that here. Has Karmi feeling better than I know is nonsense variant? Uh, we, this is literally the first game that we're playing, and we, I mean, we're playing against a horrendous matchup for Karn. <laughs> I mean, we're playing against a horrendous matchup, period, but we, it's like this is even worse for Karn, so it's right now it's hanging out you know, in our sideboard. But, like, I don't expect to face a lot of Storm in an open metagame. I just send a message. Yeah, you're good, Jesus. You're good. Don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, we, we have not been able to... 
again, this like the the reason why I put together this list is because I've been theory crafting after analyzing the this past weekend's results, right? And you know, I am thinking about the metagame that I saw there, which is definitely not the same metagame as Magic Online, right? In Magic Online, they lost connection, I guess. Um, in Magic Online, you're going to face decks that you're actually quite unlikely to face in, in like Paper Magic tournaments, be it a GP or something like that. So the side went through this year and the side makes sense. Tried it. It was horrendous. Um, the cards that you could consider that I oh, I, I tried when, when I was first brewing up the Karn the current list, I was, I was testing all kinds of stuff. I was testing, um, oh, there we go. I was, I tested Trinisphere. I tested, uh, freaking, um, Chalice. Uh, I, I don't remember if I tested Thorn of Amethyst. Maybe I did. I, I actually don't, I legit don't remember. Um, so there were a ton of things that I that I tested. Sorry, I'm 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 stopping here because we can go for lethal. I think I'm gonna once upon first because if we find a sun home, it's not sun home. But if we find a sun home, like we can we can present lethal here. I think that this is actually better. We're present this is like actually way better. So now we can present lethal without needing to without needing to use the scout activation. Because before we could have gone to attacks, attack with prime time, we uh, get sun home plus bounce and we flash in the sun home. Now we can present lethal. Yeah, we can present lethal without using the scout activation, so we can still hold up Bog. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I tested all of those cards, and the ones that I'm not playing, it's because they are not worth it. They just don't do what you want to do. Like, Trinisphere is good when you're playing on turn 2, which is very, very unlikely, since you are, you know, the idea is that you want to minus with Karn, right? And even in the matchups where Trinisphere is good, be it Storm, be it like um, Infect, like those kind of matchups, those are the matchups where you're siding out Karn, which means that Trinisphere makes even less sense. Same thing with Chalice. Like those cards don't make sense because the matchups where you want them in, you're actually siding out Karn because Karn is bad. So um, those cards just don't work. And same with Ensnare Bridge. I, I see people all the time playing Ensnare Bridge. And it's just really hard to empty your hand with this deck. So um, the Snare and Bridge, in my up, in my testing, just didn't like multiple times. I had a Snare and Bridge in play, and I just had like a multiple bounce on hand, and I just like my opponent had like three three champion of the parish or something, and I was I was dead anyway. <laughs> so, um, so like those cards just like seem okay in theory, but they don't end up working. What's up, Punt? How you doing? Remember the times where you thought Field was too clunky? Good times. I mean, it's funny, but it was. Like, you can go back to those matches. Like, I, I urge you to go back to those matches. And, like, you can see how, like, Field would never win me a game that that I was... I, I was just very unlucky, quote-unquote, <laughs> I guess. It's a way to put it. Um, I guess I'm going to keep this. I was just very unlucky because I was just consistently... Just it was just consistently not happening for me, you know. So that's our bounce land, which is nice. Uh, hmm. This is actually super interesting. We do need a second green source. 
but if, if this scout dies, we're super far behind. So I guess I need to find a sanctuary anyway here. Is this the deck that spikes the current metagame in your opinion? I don't know what you're your what you mean, spaghetti. I mean like it's it's well positioned in the current metagame. I, I imagine that's what you mean. And in that case, I think so. That's why I built it. Yeah, I think this scout it's kind of likely to just die. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with the Azusa. I think it's super close though. But now but I'm not gonna be able to play Asus on two. They have the bolt, yeah. Okay. Play Teleri West. Pass the turn. Braid. Brutal. Good thing is my opponent has only two cards left in hand. Oof. Yeah, that's actually not bad. Alright. <laughs> Very happy I kept this Azusa now. Please don't have it OP. I put two cards on the bottom. I feel like I have to play against Reman around Remand here. It would be nice to have like a disdainful stroke, something like that. And now we have to jam into remand, unfortunately for us, because we have nothing else going on. Wow, they didn't have it. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so we're getting Bojuga Box, Simic Growth Chamber. Things are looking pretty good for us. My opponent has two cards left in hand, no mana dork. They can gift and step. I just try to deny them as much mana as possible. And they're gonna have one turn to go off. Yeah, I think I just need to be in both both rituals. Right? So been desperate Morphos. If I been that though, I've been Morphos and Ritual. My opponent's gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so if I if I do that, then they can pass in flames and they can mana morphos anyway. So if I like if I bin both of this, I force them to have a land, an untapped land, it cannot be a spiral of canal or a ritual. But they get to draw one card to dig towards it. So what do we want? You think they don't win without a bear? Alright, so we want to deny them the likelihood of getting okay, so we're gonna bin this and this then. That's an interesting idea actually. I think you might be correct, Bunt. So their hand is Ritual, Piff, and two unknowns. With no bear in play. Yeah, so I guess that they would they can metamorphose if they want to, but in order to get there, they're gonna need to like 
they're going to have to have used all their pith and rituals already, which means that they're going to have they're going to have cast them without bears. So they kind of have to find something right here. And they did. <laughs> ah! <laughs> this is very frustrating. This is very frustrating. They found it in the last possible turn with the last possible thing. Ugh. So we've been this and we've been the ritual. Yeah, right. So now they have like infinite mana. But they still need to find a wink on. They're totally going to find the gifts here, the Iron Day. Last card in hand, the gifts. You have to be kidding me! Wow, they just had the perfect hand. <laughs> wow. Well, I can't beat that. I tried my best. Whew. Wow, they just had the perfects, just like they could not I guess that they there was one card. The, the second bear was the second bear was like they, they didn't need it, but they just had the exact perfects. Yeah, they had one draw step to find a bear and they did. It is what it is. That is storm for you. That is storm for you. Uh, yep. <laughs> Turn three kill into it. Stoneforge Mystic. Haven't played against Hallowed Fountain in so long, it's crazy. Batter Skull, sweet. Uh Should I bait with the Karn here? I think I bait with a Karn. They didn't have Force of Negation, otherwise they would have probably forced my first amulet. Yeah, but if they Battle Skull and attack it, they can't kill it. Spell Pierce? Yep, I'll pay. <laughs> yes. 
second spell appears. That's perfectly fine. That's basically one turn I time walked my opponent. Oh, we're doing this. Yeah, this is that's not a good play. <laughs> not a good play. They should have waited. Um I think we do the same thing again. Karn. Mana leak. That's fine. My opponent's not attacking and they're not flashing in their battle skull, so that's definitely a good a good thing for me. So they're probably gonna bounce one of my amulets, that's fine. Just gonna replay it. And we still have Titan mana. Uh um, I I punted. I I think I should have. That was the turn that I should have played the, the Titan. I I misclicked, honestly. All right, now we're too late now. <clears throat> also, by the way, we would have had we would have had two mana floating. Uh, so we could have Karn minus Explosives, Explosives are zero, and we could have blown up the germ. So it would have still been fine. Are we behind now? Because now my opponent is holding up Cryptic Command. It's four mana. We're going to have two more mana in play, and then I can play one, two, three, four. So I'm I'm trying to see if I can transmute. I guess they can take one turn off to transmute for the Cavern of Souls or not. I don't think I can. Force of negation. Okay, well that's actually good because now I can transmute for another for another pact of the summon respect. Summon respect, pact, primeval titan, cast. You have a mana leak? You don't, sweet. T West, growth chamber. Do whatever. Bounce. Transmute. Get another summer respect. Say go. 
Why are we playing so much white? Because we're playing path in the sideboard. <clears throat> Point and paths. Sure. We're looking pretty good here. One, two. One, two, three, four to pay for pact. One, two, three, four, five. Point is one minute short here. Sort of feast and famine. Yep. Poggers. Um, so let's start one, two, three. Four, five, six. We can even play our own mana leak, which is sweet. Opponent concedes. Feels good, man. Feels good. Thicket replaced the colony in old list. <clears throat> uh, I guess that's a way to put it, yeah. I guess that's the way to put it, yeah. So we want <clears throat> this and this. And I didn't see cryptic commands. <clears throat> do we assume Do I assume that my opponent is playing cryptic commands? Hmm. I don't think I do. Taking out. I think it's Sun Home. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm assuming no no cryptic, so that's why I'm gonna leave the strokes in the sideboard. They showed me two spell pierces, which makes me think that they're playing more of a tempo version rather than a rather than the the heavier control version. Yeah, actually, because of that, I'm not even gonna play Rami up. I don't think. So you're currently going to surprise for me. I do find myself signing out a lot now though. Yeah, it's, I have not been on Colony for a while and I have not really been missing it very much, to be honest. Uh, this hand is just perfect. This hand is just perfect, yeah. The only bad thing about this hand is that we might need to this go to discard. That's literally the only bad thing about this hand. I I don't think I want I want to show them cavern there though, because otherwise it might have been correct for me to play cavern on two, so I can. So in case I draw a scout. Yeah, well, I need to discard. I think I'm just going to discard the Steerix. What did they get? Sword? Okay. That one is a problem. That one is also a problem. All right, my opponent's a little bit, a little bit hateful over there. And 
and they have sword. So I think I need to copy their hallowed fountain, unfortunately. I'm going to need to wait until I find another green source. I guess I could just throw this down on giant. Yeah, I guess I have the bounce land, so we're fine here. Yeah, this game spiraled out of control pretty quickly. Another damping sphere, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I guess we just play a Titan here, don't we? We don't gotta get fetch. Fidoson, thank you so much for that Twitch from sub. Welcome to the Primetime Stronghold. Thank you very much, my friend. Enjoy your emotes and the Saddle Guide as well. Yeah, so they could have had like Queller and stuff, but if they have Battle Scroll in hand, then. I like the, the stone forge is untapped, so they can they can flash it in, and then they can attack me with a skull the following turn. So it's just like I don't know. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna play this. Play this, bounce, and replay this on giant. Opponent, you have an Ashiok in play. <laughs> turn two Stoneforge, turn, two, uh, turn three Ashiok, turn four Damp Sphere, and we win anyway. I guess they just tilted off or something. Well. I guess that worked out. <laughs> No, Punt. I, I wanted to do that because this leaves me blue and white mana, and my opponent's only answer to a Titan would be uh, a path, so that gives him the green mana that I need. Because Ashiok only works when I am the one triggering the search, so we, stu we still do find the land from the path to exile. I guess that that is worse against specifically 3 Fairy. If my opponent has 3 Fairy, then... Now the counter Q with Neoform. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that would be pretty good. A against this version in particular, I don't think we can be Neoform. Though we have in the past, just because meme brand, you know, just... Meme brand just does the meme brand thing and they just roll over and die. That is that is our out for the meme brand matchup. <laughs> I like this hand. This is a turn three card on the play. Definitely keeping it. Is it time for the daily mail? No, it's time for the daily shadow. I guess it could be Ursa. Hopefully it's Ursa. Because this hand cannot really beat that shadow. I've been a mystical dispute over the Sifu stroke lately, and I've liked it so far. Why the Sifu? Tron? Tron scape shift. Yep. Also, Mystical Dispute is like it's only better against Ursa if they have turn three Yoko. In the mid to late game, it's way uh, this Sniffle Stroke is just way better. It's a hard counter against Ursa, hard counter with Trick Tip, and now people are playing Karn, so it's even better than it was before. So yeah, I I like uh, Stroke over Mystical Dispute. 
traverse for a basic. Man, we streamed this deck yesterday. Holy crap, is it good? I enjoyed it a lot. Had a great time playing this deck. I might stream it again in the future. It also felt super powerful. You can check it out in YouTube. You can go to my YouTube channel and find the find a video right there. Four color death shadow. Whoops. The good thing is our hand is pretty much Thoughtseize proof. The bad thing is that we really rely on this Trascat to survive in order to get anything going in time. Otherwise, we're just going to get completely rolled over. The good thing is that if my opponent... Like, they can't play a Shadow and kill my Scout on the same turn, so at least it... Even if they spend their turn killing Shadow. Unless they have this member. This member would be the worst case scenario. Which is apparently what they have here. No, they have it going. Okay, cool. So at least we get to make some land drops before everything goes to shit. Um, so many Karns. Still need to kill this. There's the Swamperino. No blocks, opponent. No blocks. Just even more thoughts is proof, yeah. I kind of want my opponent to thoughts is me just so they know, you know? Just so they know. This is also great news for me, because this is that the this means that the only potential answer to this scout is gonna be an Oko. Which means that it's a sorcery speed answer. Which means that I can steal a card next turn. But opponents, you could have done this. They could have dealt one more damage. Whatever. Um, yeah, we got a we got a Vesuva, their breeding pool, just so we can carn here. Yeah, like they could have made the going for four or five. Like they missed on one point of damage for no reason, what no reason at all. So we're going to go get explosives. Pass the turn. Now we're actually not thought he's proof. So then they're gonna kill the Karn. Shadow's gonna come at me probably. Next turn I'm gonna be able to like play something. Hopefully I draw a land this turn. That would be awesome. To draw a land this turn. This turn to draw a land. This turn we draw a land. Land. This turn. A land. I mean, I could have plussed. That was the other alternative, right? Like, just plus the Karn. But if this happens... Like, my opponent only needs a land. Like, a fetch land to... Just kill the card anyway, and I get no value, so it seemed better for me to try to get some value, at least. So, go if goes at Karn. Shadow comes at me. Yeah, there we go. Go if Karn, Shadow at me. Yep. Stubby D. 
Yeah. That's fine. That doesn't grow the goif. We just need one land. At this point, it needs to be an untapped land, though, which makes matters a little bit harder. But if we do find any untapped land, we're going to be probably fine. Can we please run on top land? On top land. Yes. Um, Field of the Dead and Crossroads. It's either Crossroads or Bog. I guess Bog is better, right? Yep. This makes the Goyf tiny, and it makes their traverses much much worse. So it's kind of like gaining life, except it makes their attackers worse. They only have one blue source, so unless they have like discard into Stubby D, we should be in a fine spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Astrophy. Astrophy is still fine because it gives us a zombie. <clears throat> All right. So if the last hand is TBR, we're dead. If their last card is not TBR, we're going to win pretty handily. So I guess we're going to win pretty handily. Primeval Titan. One, three, four, this, this, this. Um, actually, we're going to do Bordos Garrison and Semi Growth Chamber. So now this is going to make it so I can bounce this and bounce the bounce land. Uh, we're going we're gonna to tap Asusa. We're going to cast Asusa, so it doesn't matter. Like, we, we're going to use exactly all of our mana. That's why I counted. So here we. Oof, I almost copied the wrong land. No, I'm not hasting. Like, there's no need for me to haste. I'm gonna have like super lethal the next turn. So why would I? Why would I want to leave myself dead to like TBR or something? You know, when I can, when I can play around it. Exactly. So now my now my opponent just can't TBR anymore because I just throw three in front of this, three in front of this, and the prime time in front of the Goif. And then next turn, I can even take put four and four here, and TBR just does not kill me, right? 
so I'm playing around TBR. If, if I haste, uh, it's not lethal. My opponent uh, fetches down to one, gets their red source, and they untap, and they attack for lethal. So definitely not a line I am I'm trying to encourage. Uh, Colossus, Bailoth, Worm Coil. Out, 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 out. And go squatter. And one steering. Yep. Yeah, so I think that my line was just a better one. Funny that the, the what my opponent was missing that entire game was a fetch land. If they had had a fetch land, they would have been <laughs> they would have killed me so much, so hard. Um, but they were missing a fetch land the entire game until that very last turn where it just didn't matter anymore. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. Um, yeah, so Bailoth is... I guess that against this version of the deck specifically, I guess they, they are usually not playing K-Command. So maybe... Yeah, may, maybe some respect is better than Bailoth. I'm kind of like used to... like If they're playing the list that we played yesterday, which is this... Then this list is not playing K command. I, like the main reason why I bring in, um, why I bring in Bayloth is because of K command and and Liliana. Yeah, uh, Pact is just very likely to get Stubby Deed. Stubby Deed. Um, I'm gonna play Crossroads in case I draw a path. I would expect my opponent is going to be holding up Stubby D over there. So I'm probably not going to jam this amulet on turn 2. Or it's going to get discarded. That's another possibility. Yep. So bye bye second amulet. No Karn I can get into? I mean, why wouldn't you be into Karn, right? Karn's great. Oof, wow. No second land, it's pretty huge. No second land is pretty massive. I mean, my opponent's playing a 17 land deck, keeping a 1 lander after they, they fetch, so they shaved one of their lands out of the deck. It is a little bit gritty. They also didn't have any cantrips. They didn't have a street rate, and they didn't have bubble either. So it's certainly a tad greedy. So they're probably going to find a basic swamp here. Yeah, they're probably traversing for a basic swamp. Oh, basic island! Okay, so my opponent is playing... is not playing TBR, then. Basic island in your shadow deck. Ha! Huh. Okay. Basic island in the shadow deck. Yes, but Traverse is... Mm. So we can either path this Goif, or we can simply just... I think I'm just going to play Azusa here. Uh, 
playing around removal. So my opponent held up the fetch, so they probably have Fatal Push. Yeah, maybe it's just like straight up bug. I could see that. Just straight up bug, no, no fourth color. They fetch for a basic swamp. I am perplexed. Absolutely, absolutely perplexed. So there's this member, that's fine. Don't really care. The only annoying thing is that Goif is now big. Shadow, okay. Well, so 26, I just realized. That's funny. So we're going to transmute for Summoner Spect. And I think I'm gonna take it easy. I'm gonna take it slow. Depending on what they do here, we can upkeep path. I think I'm gonna upkeep path actually. Fetch. Yeah, so my opponent's playing straight up bug. They're not playing fourth color. Uh, so maybe they actually have a basic forest in there. In before elk. Maybe they do have a basic forest. Let's see. They don't. Yeah, like the, the fact that I don't understand why they're playing basic island over basic forest. Like it seems so important with your traverse, shat, and goif deck to have access to that card. Their list is super weird. Their list is super, super weird. Um, I think I'm going to transmute for explosives on two. Because this should bait the... This should bait the... The Star in Denial. If my opponent has it. And if they ever tap out for this blue source, I'm going to Pact. Tap out off this blue source. I'm going to pact. Ceremonious rejection. Stabby D. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we're gonna pact right now. For a Titan. We're gonna get got by this Tainful Stroke. That's fine. We also, I guess, we can also get got by Thoughtseize. So here we take it five. We untap. We pay for packs. We play land. Play Veiloth. Yeah, I'm playing Karn. And we're, we're splashing white for Path to Exile precisely for what we are playing against right now. It's going to be a disdainful stroke. It is.
So that basically 100% means they have either another disinfo stroke or they have a snapcaster. Like those scars are basically confirmed. But as is, I can't really play around them unless I find like a Tolerate West or a Cavern. One, two, three, four, five, six. They could have like a mystical dispute or something. I mean, just jam. Snappy? It is Snapcaster. Okay. And that's actually lethal. Okay. That is fine. We could have we couldn't have really played around anything. Like it was what it was, right? Like the cards just did not line up. I guess the only thing that I could have changed. Oh, actually I made a mistake. Like I know that the Goyf is not lethal. So on the on that previous turn I should have played the Civic Growth Chamber, bouncing the crossroads. And then we could have double spelled and we could have played the, the Bayloth and the Titan in the same turn. No, we couldn't have transmitted for Cavern because what we transmitted for, which was the explosive, got stubbed. Got stubbed. So then the stub would have hit my summoner's back. So transmitting for Cavern would have wouldn't have done anything because I still wouldn't have had a threat. Uh, yep, great hand. Keep. But yeah, usually hoping your opponent doesn't stubby the, the your pact of your summoner's pack is not the line. Yeah, uh, yeah, Pont, you, you're right. Uh, but again, I mean, I cyborged expecting a card. Like, I didn't have enough information from game one, right? That's why I cyborged the way that I did. With the information that I have now, then I know that I basically know for a fact that having access to having access to like the more summoner spec is just almost it's basically strictly better than than um like the the obstinate bailoff right like because my opponent has like thought seasons that's their only way of discard they don't have stuff like um k command and liliana which what is what i was expecting Wait, I can't bail off? I just talked about it, it doesn't matter. It's not it's not impactful enough. It's probably goif. So our best draw here is Anasusa. Anasusa, a bounce land. A bounce land is our best draw. Baby goif. Baby goif to do to do to do baby goif to do to do to do. It's kind of brutal to have to like expose the Asusa without. Having to expose the Asusa without getting full value. Like the fact that we haven't drawn a fifth land, it's it's kind of awful for us. Unfortunately. Next turn I think we're gonna be playing explosives on two. Alternatively we can pact for <clears throat> pact for uh, Colossus. It's going to be kind of costly though, because that's going to mean that my gemstone is going to be down to one counter, because we're going to need to back for Colossus and then pay for a pact. So. Shut up, Punt. Don't. Don't. Don't channel the Asusa. 
the SSA call in. Yeah, those are some good ones that my opponent been there. No disc or cell, please. Hmm. I guess that was also pretty bad for us. All right, give me that bounce land. That's brutal. Uh, I feel like I have to. Well, at least. Uh, I'm gonna play out the explosives for one. We're gonna play Sanctuary. Bounce this and pass the turn. If we don't die this turn, we might have a shot. That's eight damage. A damage is fine. Ah, oh, that's brutal. That's the, that's one of the lands that I was gonna fetch right now. Bad beats. Bad beats. Getting Kavita Crossroads and uh, I guess I'm getting Simic. Or Teleria West. I'm expecting a Snapcaster Bojuka Bog here. So I'm trying to see how can I play around that the best. I think it's actually going to be T West Simic. So if I need to, I can transmit for something else. Unless my opponent has their own explosives, which would be an absolute blowout, by the way. But unless they have their own explosives, we should be fine here. Why would I want to bounce the cavern? It's on giant, which is what I want it to be on. Here comes Snappy. Snappy's fine. In fact, I wonder if my opponent should have Assassin's Trophy the Field of the Dead earlier. No, when I cast, like my opponent was tapped out when I cast at the Azusa, so I or I already played the Cavern on Giant, so I could save one gemstone mine counter. Snow covered forest. Get zombie. Seems like my bird needs to have an explosive on zero or they're just dead. Like I know they don't have TBR, so they can't get through these guys. Inquisition. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, 
Uh, we're not going to be able to cast a Titan here, so I'm going to pack for a Colossus. So there goes the Azusa. Wow, they offer the trade. They know I have a Colossus in hand, and they offer the trade with a Snapcaster Mage. Of note, uh, you can have Cavern on anything, and it's going to make the Colossus uncounterable, which is a pretty neat interaction. It really works in a beautiful way. That's an Azusa. All right, this, this, and this. Uncounterable giant, baby. Bog you, get a zombie. Is Liana their last card in hand? There's no way. I'm calling your bluff opponent. Totally calling that bluff. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Attack for lethal. Lethal, yeah. That felt nice. That felt nice. I imagine my opponent's last card in hand was like a disdainful stroke or something that we just completely blanked with our cavern. And that is why, like, when I, like, of course, cavern is great against control decks and stuff, but like, the real reason why cavern is in my sideboard right now is because of shadow, <laughs> which is, which is kind of weird, but it's, it's like the very, like the actual truth. <laughs> Shadow and Ursa are the main reasons why Cavern is in my sideboard right now. Wait a second. We're playing against the same blue white stone blade player from earlier. Modo, come on. They might have started it in new league. Keep this one, bottom, this, I guess. I guess Crossroads is worse.
I wonder if they noticed my username. <laughs> I wonder if they're looking at the stream. So after experimenting without steerings, what's the verdict? When did I experiment without steerings? I'm playing steerings. <laughs> it's literally right here. And if you mean the reclaimer list, that's a completely different animal. Like uh, that doesn't count at all. It's very different because the reason, that, the only reason we're not playing steerings with the reclaimer list, it's because we need to make room for flagstones. So it's like, oh, well, that's brutal. Turn two Stoneforge. <laughs> Turn two Hollow Fountain Stoneforge. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think Steering is great. In fact, when I when I played without Steering in the current list and I was playing Explorers instead, I think, I, I totally missed Ancient Steering. So, yeah, the card is the card's good. We want it. Yeah, those Explorer decks were like three or four weeks ago. It's been a while. And I, I yeah, and I think Steering is just way better than, than Explorer and that kind of stuff. <laughs> Ugh, that's like the... Worst possible case scenario. They still have a spell, a spell in the in the bank there. I guess I guess I'm steering anyway, right? Casting steering anyway. But if we find the bounce land here, which we should, like we're we're likely to do so. There we go. Uh, oof. Actually, we might need to do this. Otherwise, we're going to die to these dudes. So we're going to... It's going to cost us the gemstone mine, which is a massive cost. But I'm going to... I'm going to have to, I think. That's a lot of damage. Not that one. <laughs> Almost clicked the wrong one. Not that one. This one. And unfortunately, I don't think I can realistically afford to take the damage. Can I? Yeah, I guess I am. Like, I'm dead to so many things at this point. That's a lot of spike. No, I was I was literally dead already, because they have a level art in the, in the graveyard, so it didn't matter what I did. All right. Um, Baloth, Sage, Force. This out. Hate more red power so much. I mean, it's, it's it's an okay deck. It's it's fine. It does what it promises. I guess it's it's kind of brutal, but like we just there's nothing we can really do. Like we actually need to leave some scouts in the deck because we just don't have enough cards to make up for it. It's the car the downside of Karn, I guess. No, no worm coil. Worm coil is it's too slow, way too easy for our opponents to play around. It's too much of a cost. I guess I guess we keep this and we hope that my opponent's playing a, a Blood Moon hand. But this, I mean, this, ha we're in the play and this has like everything else that we want otherwise. So we have Azusa, we have Lance. We can draw Steering, so that's why I'm playing the Gemstone Mine on turn one over the Field of the Dead. 
turn one lava spike you. Punished. So punished. Okay, them, them cycling a the crash is actually great news for me. Uh, Field of the Dead and I guess Bojuka Bog. Sure. I mean, every single spell that they cast without a creature in play is just so good for me. Any untapped land, please. I guess a suicide blocker. Yeah. A blocker that doesn't die to like the thing, I mean. Why did I choose to not play castle? Because I'm playing Karn. <laughs> Castle and Karn kind of like draw you into different directions. Yeah, we're gonna have to chomp this monastery to sphere. Uh, actually, do we? If they have a bolt, I take seven. Okay. That's not a bad draw at all. Primeval Titan. Pointing conceits. All right. <clears throat> yeah, we're running Karn today. And, like, basically, the whole castle thing is about not playing Bounce Lands. And, like, that's not how it works with Karn. Like, we actually want more Bounce Lands because we're playing less amount of lands. And um, yeah, it just doesn't like the castle doesn't really help us cast Karn. Bounce lands do, but castles don't. Right, so every time that you drop a castle that could have been a bounce land, you're actually like one land behind in order to ca to cast Karn. Um, yeah, that's fine. Game three. They kept. So if I found that Bounce Land this hand is excellent, yeah, I think I'm gonna keep. It's definitely greedy, but I don't think this is a particularly good matchup. And any green Bounce Land basically puts me in an amazing spot. Redundant Titan is not where I wanna be though. We're just playing to the numbers here. Brutal. It's not the bounce line that I was talking about. <laughs> was bound to happen eventually. 
I suspect that my opponent had a Blood Moon hand last game as well, except that last game we had the Force. Which made beating that very easy, actually. Nice. Steering's into another basic. And we can, we can path for Sage now. And also my opponent like basically wasted uh, light up the stage, which is great for me. Mountain and bolt. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna pack for Sage here, and play this, but this is actually better because it ramps me. So, packed. We died to second Blood Moon, but we cannot really expect to be the second Blood Moon. Reclamation Sage. Cast Sage. Destroy Moon. Play Yasusa. Play this. And now we die only to exactly second Blood Moon. That's the only thing we die to. I braid my amulet and Bedlam Braveler. Okay, so we're fine. Yes. Semi growth chamber. Transmute for basic forest. They're rarely seen transmute for basic forest. Because the only, I guess the only way that I lose here is if my opponent bloodmoons me again. And at least this way I can hard cast a force of vigor. Or a titan in this case. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cast prime time. Opponent concedes. We like to Magus of the Moon. I guess. I guess you're right. All right. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Sounds like as good a time as any to show off the Nova matchups emote. Blood Moon, you say? Turn three, Blood Moon. Lose the game on turn ten. Classic. Classic. This hand doesn't do anything, so we're going to ship it. This hand is a turn four Karn. I'm definitely keeping, I'm thinking of what to bottom. I think I'm gonna bottom the T-West. And we're gonna hope to steerings into another bounce land or an amulet. We're given both. Um, uh, Jim and Gary, no, Daphne's here wasn't lethal because of uh, we had a gemstone mine in play. And Colby81, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Welcome back to the Primetime Stronghold. Only here for the easy cyber guy. Thanks for doing the work playing Moto so we don't have to. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, yeah. I think I'm actually going to go with the Bordos Garrison.
Like, this is a turn 3 Karn instead of a turn 4 Karn, but it cost me the Gemstone Mine, and if we don't draw another Bounce Land, we're just kind of dead. So I think I'm going to go with the Garrison. Which is weird, but I think it's great. We're totally going to draw, like, another Bounce Land, and I'm going to be very unhappy with the decision that I made, but... I think that having, having access to the Reliant ramp is going to be better than having access to... We're playing against Shadow, I guess, so never mind. So many Shadow decks. So many Shadow decks. Well, it seems like a huge shadow fest right now. Yeah, I mean, I am I'm prepared for it, right? It's just there, there's so much death shadow. I think it must be because it's so much cheaper than the Ursa deck, right? Because like the Simic Ursa deck is probably just better than Death Shadow, but it's it's so much cheaper to build. Like, Tarmogoyves right now are the cheapest that they've ever been on Moto. I remember buying my Tarmogoyves at, like, 23 bucks or something. I was like, whoa, I got them for so cheap. I'm so lucky. And, like, Tarmogoyves right now are, like, 4 bucks for tickets or something. Shadows were all, always dirt cheap. Like, basically has no expensive cards anymore. Bye bye, Asusa. Oh, Stitchers. Oh. Must be nice. I guess that's what my opponent's up to over there. Should I also have a decent blue green matchup? Yep. If you learn how to play against Shadow, I hear there is one guy who has an hour long deep dive on the Titan and Shadow matchup. That is correct. What is his face? And where can you find it? Well, that's a great question. Very glad you asked. You can go to my Patreon. The Deep Dive series is a series where I talk about uh, specific matchups and I go over, you know, like how to approach it, what to do in terms of if you want to, like, you know, prepare for that matchup. And even which cards you could consider adding to your deck in order to uh, to position yourself better against that specific matchup. Uh, it's available to the Asusa tier subscribers. Asusa tier patrons, I guess. Whenever I play this deck, because I play like two leagues with this deck, and I go turn one supplier, and I've been like land, land, glimpse. I, I don't think I've ever, in like two leagues, I don't think I've ever like supplier and like got an actual good value. This deck is so volatile. It's powerful, don't get me wrong, but it's like, it's stupid volatile. Okay, so we're going to have a Titan next turn. Hopefully we should be able to stabilize. No need to show them that, that we have the sixth land for Titan. So I'm just going to do this, pass it turn. Um, best thing that we can draw is like a land or something. They have the glimpse. They do have... What? Oh, your opponent. Are you trying to get cute, opponent? Mm. Oh, that's that's not how you win games a magic opponent. That's not how you win games a magic opponent. I mean, you'd better have the surgical in hand. If you don't have the surgical in hand, that you wasted a glimpse, glimpse in me. 
Also, if you're playing an aggro deck with main deck surgical, like what the hell is going on? I mean, if they if they want if they do have the surgical, they totally got me. Like, good for them. But like, okay, there there goes one chill. You see, they don't have the surgical because obviously they don't have the surgical. So, like, what the hell? What was the point? I really don't get it. I. I don't know. It has to have been a misclick. That's the only explanation. Uh, they literally have nothing worth uh, bogging over there. So I'm going to do just crossroads and a bounce land so I can get I can gain more life and get out of hasty blood gas range. Yeah, it like misclick is literally the only explanation that I can find. Cuz that is a terrible play. Like, any way you slice it, it's just a really, really bad play. So it has to have been a, a misclick. He knows how good Mill is against us, so they tried. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's not going to work out that well for them, but like, it's cute that they tried. Hard cast price and logon. Yeah, that's spoiler alert. I don't think my opponent's gonna be winning this game. The Juke Bog, sure. Um I think we just play another Titan. Look, opponent, I'm I'm making I'm emptying my deck so your so your glimpse the unthinkables are better. <laughs> you need to give us some time after you say spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, my opponent says my misclick with the glimpse turned my chance off. I'm like, yeah, I was. <laughs> I was like, am I might. Am I totally getting next level here? What's going on? Uh, Bayloth blocks my opponent's entire deck. Gonna bring in Rex Sage. Take out Karns. We could entertain the possibility of Worm Coil. I just don't want to get threat flooded. Like, we're already bringing in Bayloth. I guess they have Carrion Feeder. Yeah, they have Carrion Feeder, so Worm Coil. Maybe the example is so bad that they figure the only way to stop you is they have to be. No, I mean, my opponent, I was at seven there, right? Like, my opponent had a very real, real shot. Like, they just mill a couple of Crippin' Chills and, like, they, like, put some Vengevines into play or whatever and they just get them into play and they just race me, right? Like, they, they had a very, real, a very real shot there. That's what made it even more confusing, you know? Like, 
that's what kind of like made it a misplay, like a not a misplay, a misclick. Uh, turn four Titan, but on the draw. Opponent moves to six. Okay. I'm feeling lucky. They almost certainly have Damping Sphere. Uh, it's possible. It's possible. Ideal case scenario would be opponent goes turn one, fetch for Overgrown Tomb. We copy it with Vesuva. That would be awesome. Unlucky. Basic Forest. Nope. Alright, so now I'm building off the top. That's the line. Discard Asusa. We are, we're only going to need one. game is pretty easy when they don't have lands I guess so yeah I I don't know like I I like I like that kind of deck like I think that the the previous one like I, I remember like the 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 bridge from below the bridge vine deck that people were um so they're gonna go get crab and then they're gonna play a land immediately after or something I think or they push no that's Yeah, this is GG's. Um, I thought that deck was super sweet. Um... We aren't like too good of a spot here. Anything that we do is just fine. No, not the Gakvine. The one that people were play, that some people were playing in the Pro Tour twenty five, where they was playing like Hangerback Walker and um, what were the cards? The cards were like Hangerback Walker, Walking Ballista, like some some things like that, and it was actually a ton of fun. One, two, three, four, five, yep. So Garrison and like Sun Home, I guess. I mean, it's kind of whatever at this point. Biospark. Two with the Twitch Friends subscription. Thank you for keeping Mother alive. Yeah, that is what we're trying to do, Biospark. Thank you so much for, for the support. You are the one that's keeping Modern al alive whenever you, you sub to the channel. You're helping me continue doing what I am doing. And I thank all of you for that. All right, so this was the list. Four and one. Solid first league. Uh, only loss was to only loss was to Storm, which is a horrendous matchup. So, kind of whatever. Uh, and also, my opponent needed to have the perfects in order to to beat me there on game three. But yeah, the, the list feels pretty good. Open chests. <laughs> I've never opened chests because I don't like losing value. Um, it really is too much value. <laughs> we could have a system like some people have a system actually where like for like a hundred bit donation or something like that they will open a chest or like I don't know I don't know how that works but maybe we could have something like this. Opening chest has actually more EV than selling it. 
strongly disagree there. What is his face? <laughs> that's what that's what goat bots tell you, but it's it's a massive lie. I don't think I've ever. I I don't know how much like. I, there's other streamers that open their chest, like uh, the uh, squad chief and stuff, um, and like I don't think I've ever seen them like have a positive, a positive like chest opening in like a really long time that I've been <laughs> that I've been watching them. <laughs> Even with caring about play points, they get like ten play points and and a, a five cent rare, like five play points and a five cent rare, fifteen play points and a you know ten cent rare. It's still the same thing. It's a waste. Fan open an M20 set that's like 200. Yeah, but it's like it's one out of like how many million people? How many how many million open chests? But yeah, uh, yeah. So we're, we're gonna play another league, I think. But I'm gonna take a quick five minute break, uh, three minute break actually, because that's what the ad break thing is. But if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. You can, you're gonna be able to check out the next league and the link down below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.